If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that CAN bus has been one of the banes of this project. It's a powerful tool. The idea that with just a couple of wires, you can send signals around the vehicle. Unfortunately, it can be a little bit finickety, particularly if like me, you're not brilliant at this stuff. So I built myself a CAN bus test network a while back. Nice little 3D printed case, a couple of Arduinos and some sketches to send and receive messages. And since I built it, I've thought it worked. But I slowly realized that nothing I plugged into it was actually working properly. And last night, admittedly after a couple of glasses of wine, I had a moment of inspiration and I worked out why it wasn't working, even when it looked like it did. This is my CAN bus test setup. So what can you see? In the background powering things is an old laptop power supply with a couple of 3D printed outlets and a switch to turn it on and off. This is the heart of the thing. So inside here, which I'll show you in a second, a couple of Arduinos, MCP2515 CAN transceivers, um, and they're just on a loop with these nice little clip connectors allowing me to do breakouts and little branches out to various things. One branch is going out to an Arduino Due in a case that I need to redesign uh, running Savvy CAN just with a proto board and a couple of CAN transceivers on the top uh, and another breakout um, well actually it is going to the Spaceballs board and this is a new one just arrived uh, and awaiting a working ESP32 because uh, I may have fried one. Uh, you'll see one in the bin down there. Um, over here, an old laptop running Ubuntu uh, with a couple of app images on it. One of them is, let me put the microphone down without making horrible noises if I can. Uh, one of them is Savvy Can. And you can see here that we're just picking up a couple of um, uh, frames from the transmitter side of the network um, spoofing something I think it's some of the BMS messages at the moment um, coming out of there not very fast just a few frames per second and if I switch over to uh, Arduino down here in the serial monitor you can see that the um, serial is telling me that message is sent so it's sending new messages all the time and if we swap the serial port over just close that serial monitor. We swap that serial port over to the uh, receiver side. I didn't make this particularly easy for myself with this design. Open up serial monitor again. We should see, there we go. You can see that the receiver is receiving. All good. Now in theory we've got a working network so we know that there's nothing wrong with the network itself as long as we can check continuity between whatever we plug into this network and the device itself we know that any issues that are happening if it's not communicating are on the device itself or more likely given it's me in the code. Now I thought I was at this point probably nearly a year ago this is what's inside my little test network. Nothing flashy at all. <laughs> um, an input port for, for 5 volt power. Two um, Arduino Pro Mini clones. Uh, cheap and cheerful. And a couple of MCP2515s. Now I got all this set up, soldered up ages ago. Uh, and it worked. If you plugged it in and plugged a serial cable into the... Um, into the receiver or the transmitter the lights would flash and it would say transmitting and it would say receiving and you know this saw what it was meant to see from here it all seemed to be working but when I plugged it into Savvy Can absolutely nothing and this just baffled me because it looked like a working network it was all good but nothing else I plugged into it seemed to send or receive it was only these two that could talk to each other and last night, after a, uh, a couple of glasses of Côte du Rhône uh, from Benjamin Darno on Naked Wines, highly recommended, uh, it came to me. It's these flipping things, the crystals. The, all, this, all the libraries for the MCP2515 seem to default 
to a 16 megahertz crystal. These have an 8 megahertz crystal. So of course all the timings were out. Because these were both on 8 megahertz, they could talk to each other fine. But as far as the rest of the network was concerned, they were completely out of sync. So, go into your code, as I'll show you in a second, make one tiny change, and suddenly it's all working. And there it is. After your MCP25157 set bitrate, where you set the bitrate to the speed your network's running at, so for my car everything's running at 500 uh, kilobits per second, you just add MCP underscore 8 megahertz, and that tells the library that your crystal is an 8 megahertz one, not a 16 megahertz one, and suddenly everything works. So that's that. Very short video. Um, but I am going to post the code for the spoofer and the receiver uh, on GitHub and I'll put a link in the description. Um, I'll also put a link to the um, the design file for the case if I can find it. I mean, I don't know if it's actually any use to anybody, but it looks quite neat and it works. Um, so if you did want to copy it and stick just a standard sized proto board in there um, with a couple of Arduinos on, you know, the nice way to do it would be to go and design something on Easy EDA and get it made up in China, but I still haven't really got my head around that whole PCB design thing yet. One day, one day, maybe when I retire. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was useful to somebody and catch you on the next one. Please do like and subscribe. Bye-bye.